Hello, my fabulous fifth graders. Today's lesson is about using models to add and subtract mixed numbers. And interestingly enough, our I can statement is I can use models to add and subtract mixed numbers. As you already know, a fraction represents part of a whole. We've been adding and subtracting fractions. But now we're going to focus on adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Mixed numbers represents more than a whole. So here I have 2 and 2 thirds. This would represent a quantity that's somewhere in between the whole number 2 and 3. And here I have 5 and 2 thirds. I have 5 whole numbers and two-thirds more than that. So I have a quantity that's somewhere in between the whole number five and the whole number six. We're going to add these two mixed numbers together, find the sum, and put it in its simplest form. We're going to use fraction models to help us. So I've got some models here. Here is the way that I would represent 2, 1, 2, and 2 thirds. And here's how I would represent 5 and 2 thirds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 holes and 2 thirds. When I add them together, I'm going to start by grouping my whole numbers which are here and here, and grouping my fractional parts, which are here and here. When I rearrange them and put them together, it looks like this. So now I can use these models to find my sum. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 whole numbers. And I have four thirds. Now, I know that this is greater than a whole. I know it takes three thirds to create a whole. So I can regroup these three thirds and turn them into a whole. So it would be seven plus one. And then I have my remaining fraction. So altogether, I have 7 plus 1 is 8 and 1 third left over. Now let's try it with some drawings. We have 2 and 1 third plus 1 and 1 third. So we will fill this in. We've got... Two and one third, and we have one and one third. Now I can group all of my whole numbers together. I have one, two, three. So that's three. Now I'm going to group my fractional pieces together. I have one, two. Two what? I have two thirds. So the sum of two and one third and one and one third is three and two thirds. Let's try another one. I've got one and seven eighths plus one and a half. I've got one whole and seven eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have one and a half. One whole and one half. 
Now I know, just as you know, that I cannot add halves and eighths. I can't add them because they do not have a common denominator. So I'm going to need to find an equivalent fraction that does have a common denominator. I know the least common multiple between 2 and 8 is going to be 8. So I'm going to rename my fraction as 1 and 4 eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4. So now I need to group my whole numbers. I have 1, 2 wholes. Then I need to group my fractional parts. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, plus 1, 2, 3, 4. 7 plus 4 is 11. So altogether I have 11 eighths. Now I know that 11 eighths is, represents a quantity greater than 1. 8 eighths equals a 1. So I know that this is greater than 1. I can figure that out with my fraction being a division problem. It would go in once, eight, I would have three, so I would have one and three eighths. But now I need to add this one to my other whole number. So I had two, but I need to add one. And now instead of having 11 eighths, I have 3 eighths. So altogether, I have 3 and 3 eighths. This is my final answer in simplest form. But what do we do if we are subtracting mixed numbers? Well, let's use models to help figure that out as well. Here is a story problem. Kathy has two small dogs. Spot weighs five and five eighths pounds, and Max weighs four and three eighths pounds. How much more does Spot weigh than Max? Solve any way you choose. I choose to use models. So here, I've used models to represent how much Spot weighs. Spot weighs. One, two, three, four, five, and five eighths. But max weighs four and three eighths pounds. So I'm going to cross out four whole numbers. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to cross out three of my eighths. One, two, three. Let's look at what I have left. That would represent my difference. I have one whole and I have two eighths. Now this is the correct answer, but I'm noticing that two eighths is not in its simplest form. They're both even. I can divide both of them by two. So I know that two eighths equals one fourth. Spot weighs one and one-fourth of a pound more than max. Let's try another story problem. One king crab weighs two and three-fourths pounds. A second king crab weighs one and one-fourth pounds. How much more does one king crab weigh? We're going to use models to find the difference. So I've got two and three-fourths and one and one-fourth. If I want to estimate first, I know that 2 and 3 fourths is somewhere between 2 and 3. And when I use rounding, I know that this is closer to 3. I know that 1 and 1 fourth is greater than 1, but less than 2. But I can use what I know about fractions to know that this is closer to 1 than 2. I know that 3 minus 1 is 2. So my estimate is that it's somewhere in the range. So 
we're going to use this by modeling with fraction tiles. I have two whole pounds and three fourths of a pound. Now I'm going to subtract one and one fourth by crossing out one whole number and one fourth. So that leaves me with one and two fourths. Now I know that one and two fourths is not in its simplest form. I can simplify two fourths into one half. So one and two fourths is one and one half. So two and three fourths minus one and one fourth is one and a half. The first king crab weighs one and a half pounds more than the second. Now our estimate was that it would be around two. One and a half is pretty close to two, so our answer is reasonable. Sometimes subtracting mixed numbers can be tricky. For example, in this problem, I have six minus two and four fifths. Now I know that six is greater than two and four fifths, but how am I supposed to subtract four fifths when I don't have a fractional part to subtract it from? Let's use models to figure this out. Here are six holes. I'm going to need to rename one of my holes to show fifths. I need to create fifths out of one of my holes so that I can complete my subtraction. So here, I've taken one of my holes and turned it into five fifths. So now, instead of six, I have five and five fifths. Now it's easy for me to subtract two and four fifths. I subtract two whole numbers and four of my fractional parts. What remains? Well I see that I have three whole numbers and I have one fifth that remains. Three and one fifth is my difference. Let's try one more example like this. Here I have five and two fifths and I'm subtracting three and four fifths. When I look at my problem, I see that I cannot subtract four fifths from two fifths because I don't have enough fifths to subtract. I will need to borrow from my whole number by renaming one of my holes into fractional parts. Here I've drawn a model of the quantity 5 and 2 fifths. I'm going to take one of my whole numbers and I am going to split it into fifths. Now I have one, two, three, four whole numbers, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven fifths. Now that I've renamed one of my holes, my subtraction problem is simple. I can simply subtract my whole numbers, four minus three is one, and subtract my fractional pieces. Seven fifths minus four fifths is three fifths. My answer is one and three fifths. That brings us to the end of today's lesson. Our lesson today was on using models to add and subtract mixed numbers and our I can statement was I can use models to add and subtract mixed numbers. Go ahead and press pause now if you need more time to write this down on your list. Our summarizing question today, 
asks us to explain using complete sentences the steps you would take to find the difference between two and one third and one and three eighths. This is a bit of a challenging problem. If you get stumped, feel free to rewind the video to our last two examples. And finally, the Q section of our WISC asks us to solve these three problems. Here we have an example of each of the types of problems I demonstrated in tonight's video. We have adding mixed numbers, subtracting mixed numbers, and subtracting mixed numbers where you will have to rename one of the holes in order to complete the subtraction. I look forward to seeing what you come up with in class tomorrow.